Uh, so may I have your permission to start the session? Yeah. Okay. Great. So uh, good morning, everyone. And a very warm welcome to Mr. Sanjeev Singhal, sir, uh, who has, uh, uh, you know, uh, given us the opportunity to 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 make him the you know uh, be made available for all of us and listen to his uh, uh, to his expert words and the kind of uh, work that he's been doing in his field uh, though uh, mr single is a ca by profession uh, but his uh, vigor and his uh, uh, inclination towards environment has uh, has helped him to gain more and more information and, and learning towards uh, the environment and sustainable development. Uh, Mr. Sanjeev Singhal, sir, is a partner with uh, SRB network firms in the uh, assurance practice, specializing in financial accounting advisory services. Uh, he joined the firm in 2015 and is based in the Delhi office. Uh, as I said before, uh, sir is a chartered accountant from the uh, Institute of Chartered Accountants of India and uh, has gained his PhD in international finance from Faculty of Management Studies, Delhi. Uh, he is an alumnus of Delhi School of Economics and Sri Ram College of Commerce. Sir is a gold medalist from Delhi University and has had an excellent academic credential to himself. He has more than 17 years of post-qualification experience working in various industries, such as pharma, financial services, media, healthcare, education, etc. And I believe all of this, of course, is, uh, is, is based on the sustainability question, and hence the sustainable development is an important uh, you know, factor for his, um, his, his, his profession as well. He has uh, also worked on a very wide spectrum of finance functions, such as accounting, reporting, compliance, et cetera. Uh, currently, uh, you know, uh, he is also working on the uh, INDAS related initiatives for the firm and is working in various other sectors, such as fertilizers and chemicals, uh, which is, of course, um, is, is very directly and very critically uh, related to the environment. So not taking much of uh, my time on the screen, I welcome Mr. Singhal to uh, to take over the session and uh, I, I believe that all the participants they are also eager to hear you out sir over to you sir thank you very much uh, professor a very good morning to all friends it's indeed a pleasure to be with the ramanujan college always a deep respect for the principal dr s p agarwal and uh, let me tell you that chartered accountants are second to none when it comes to the environment as well. And uh, as a chairman of the Sustainability Reporting Standard Board, we have completed nine batches of the certificate course on the business responsibility and sustainability reporting, and more than 700 members have been trained into that. So I'll be sharing a presentation on the, uh, on the environmental measures in India in achieving the goals of the sustainable development and uh, most of it comes from the experience and the active work that we do in the Sustainability Reporting Standard Board. I'm also the chairman of the task force of the SAFA, which is South Asian Federation of Accounting, uh, this task force on the climate change and sustainability. And uh, we also work with the International Federation of Accountant, IFAC, PAFA, uh, which is Pan-African Federation of Accountant, and also with the World Economic Forum. Uh, so let me uh, uh, take you through that, what we are into. So recently, this Intergovernmental Panel for Climate Change, uh, there's a paper which is issued by the Code Red. It's a Code Red for humanity. And the heat is actually on, on all of us. And we know that climate change is real and human activities are the main cause during COVID, the earth was taking a break and uh, the nature was uh, na nature was flourishing. All of us were locked inside and uh, the animals and the birds were outside. Why? Why that happened? Because the GHG emission at that point of time has significantly gone down and we are back to the same levels again. The concentration of the GHG 
gases in the Earth's atmosphere are directly linked to the average global temperature on the Earth, and the concentration has been rising steadily. The mean global temperature along with it since the time of the Industrial Revolution. And of course, CO2, carbon dioxide, comprises two-thirds of the GHG emissions, and methane comprises about 25% of the GHG emissions. Methane is a very powerful pollutant with a global warming potential over 80 times greater than the CO2 during the 20 years after it is released into the atmosphere. Uh, let us look at the global and regional risk for increasing levels of global warming. This is where we were in 1950 to 2000. And now there are four possible projections and scenarios. If the temperature rises by 1.9 degree, we will be here. If it goes up to 2.6 degree, we'll be here. It can go up to 4.5 degree. It can go up to 7 degree. It can go up to 8.5 degree. So this is, this is what can happen. So there are reasons for concern. And the, uh, this, is, uh, this has been made by the uh, uh, IPCC, Climate Change 2022. Uh, so it talks about uh, the various scenarios which can happen if we do not adapt ourselves to the sustainable practices. So if you really look at today, there is a climate hazard there is exposure and then there is vulnerability leading to the overall risk. Uh, we need to adapt. We need to be on the right side of this graph from urgent to timely action. The governance needs to be placed. The finances needs to be in place. Knowledge and capacity building has to happen and technology needs to be adopted. What we need to do, we need to have a climate resilient development uh, which is focusing on human health and well-being, equity and justice. We need to have an ecosystem health and the planetary health. Uh, the ecosystem transition should focus on land, fresh water, coastal areas, ocean ecosystems, and their biodiversity. We need to adapt to mitigate. We need to adapt to mitigate, and 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 you know the transition has to happen in the human systems as well. There has to be a societal level change uh, energy, the way we produce and consume energy, industrial growth, urban, rural, and infrastructure. All these needs to undergo change. We talk of net zero. Let us understand what is net zero. Uh, the science-based targets uh, initiative defines net zero as reducing the scope one, scope two, and scope three emissions to zero or to a residual level, which is consistent with the overall target of maintaining the uh, climate uh, temperature within 1.5 degree. That is the increase in temperature within 1.5 degree and neutralizing any residual emissions at the net zero target year, which is 2050. And uh, so the scope is that it should cover all direct and indirect, that is including the supply chain emissions also. So we call them scopes one, two, and three. Uh, the existing standards and the certification are currently being developed by the Science Space Target Initiative, and it encompasses the whole organization. Net zero, of course, is a, is a, is a long-term goal, and it involves setting specific target to work towards with mandatory short, medium-term targets. And uh, as we said, that we have to achieve the net zero uh, uh, in line with 1.5 degrees Celsius pathway. And the timeline to do that is 2050. India has promised 2070 as of now, but we will see in the times to come, it will be reduced to 2050. Let us see the India's focus on the climate change. Uh, there are many decarbonization drivers. Technological innovations are happening. Job growths are happening. Net zero targets have been set by 127 countries. And the oil and gas sector is very, very active on this. Uh, energy security is a priority and there is a lot of CO2 emissions in the oil and gas sector. Of course, there are emissions in the others as well. So if you look at the Paris Agreement, it was adopted by 196 countries and targets are being revised every five years. And the 
current target is uh, to achieve climate neutrality by 2050. India's target is the commitment that was given by the Prime Minister in COP26 that uh, by 2030, we will reduce our carbon intensity by almost one third. And, uh, and our commitment uh, is to produce 5 million tons of green hydrogen by 2030. You may have noticed that, uh, that the minister, Mr. Mr. Nitin Gadkari, yesterday traveled to the parliament in the hydrogen propelled vehicle. Uh, so there are various schemes of the government, the PAT scheme, the Ujala scheme, uh, Kusum scheme, PLI scheme, the national solar mission, green hydrogen policy and national policy on biofuels. Uh, so the government is very, very active in this direction. If you look at uh, the, I mean, how people are basically uh, looking at this whole strategy around climate, uh, if I take the international oil and gas measure, Shell, BP, Total, etc. So they are doing a peer assessment that what their peer sets are doing. They are setting the narrative, redefining the KPI. So KPIs are no more financial targets, which are given to the sales team, marketing team, finance team, etc. Now KPIs are being redefined and a carbon roadmap is being developed and GHG accounting is happening. Uh, so this will increase the stakeholder confidence. Uh, if you really see that today, the, particularly the international investor and the private equity investor is not willing to invest in a company if it is not sensitive to the environment. Now let's talk about what is sustainability. Sustainability as defined by the United Nations Brundtland Commission is meeting the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. So what it indicates, we have to meet our needs without compromising on the future generations. And today, the scenario is that by 15th of August, we are using the annual resources of the earth. So in seven and a half months, we are using 12 months resources, which means that we are borrowing from the next year and borrowing from the next generation. We need to focus on the triple P's. Earlier, the focus was on profits, and now the focus is on profit, planet, and people. So when we talk of profit, we talk of economic viability. So we talk of strengthening and maintaining the current and future jobs with sufficient incentives, both to employer and the employee. Compliance, governance, and risk management. Then we talk about research and development, innovation, technology upgradation, and we talk of a circular economy. That is the whole economy of production to consumption. The whole economy of production to, uh, to consumption has to be sustainable. The whole chain from this production to consumption has to be sustainable. Now, if we talk about planet, we should focus on the natural resource integrity and protection, reducing our environment footprint and doing a waste management. Waste management is very, very important. If you look the if you look at if you look at the landfill, if you look at the landfill in Delhi, two landfill account for 180 lakh ton of waste and more than uh, more than 60 to 70 lakh ton of waste is generated every year and uh, and then of course every decision has to be an an environment friendly decision uh, around the people if we talk about we have to ensure the local communities protection the human health and safety employee welfare and resource security and, and, and then we have to build training capacity and capacity building. So we need to focus on economic viability, environment protection, and the social equity. Uh, I hope my screen is visible and it is changing. Can uh... Yes, sir. Okay, fine. So now let's talk of these 17 sustainable development goals, which the United Nations has given in 2015. We'll talk about each goal. Uh, this is a whole matrix of the 17 SDGs. Uh, and these SDGs are cross-cutting 
and multidimensional. They focus on the E, S, and G. So when we talk about social, SDG 1 to 6 focus on social. No poverty, zero hunger, good health and well-being, quality education, gender equality, and clean water and sanitation. On the economic goals, SDG 7 and 11 focuses on affordable and clean energy, decent work and economic growth, industry innovation infrastructure, reducing inequalities, sustainable cities and the communities. On the environmental side, uh, uh, we focus on the, just a minute. Yeah, on the environment side, uh, the SDG 12 to 15 covers sustainable consumption and production, climate action, life below water, life on land. And SDG 16 and 17 talk about fostering peace and partnership in the form of peace, justice, and strong institutions and partnerships for the goals. Let us talk about SDG 1. SDG 1 focuses on poverty. The goal is to end poverty in all its forms everywhere. And, and we know that COVID-19 has led to a first rise in extreme poverty in a generation. Why? Because the poor had no means to earn their living. The global poverty rate is projected to be 7% in 2030. 7% in today's scenario is very, very high. And the working poverty, that is those people who are working and still they are in poverty, that disproportionately affects women and youth and the pandemic is likely to magnify those disparities. And eradication of poverty should not be seen as a task of charity. It should be seen as an act of justice and the key to unlocking an enormous human potential. The target on SDG 1 is that by 2030, uh, eradicate extreme poverty for all people everywhere. And that's measured as uh, people uh, living on less than $1.25 a day they are being treated as extreme poverty. And by 2030, reduce at least by half the proportion of men, women, and children of all ages living in poverty in all its dimensions, according to the national definition. So here, a leeway has been given to each country to define it and implement nationally appropriate social protection system and measures for all, including floors, and by 2030, achieve substantial coverage of the poor and the vulnerable. Let's now talk about SDG 2, which is zero hunger. The goal is to end hunger, achieve food security, and improve nutrition and promote sustainable agriculture. Today, there are about 720 to 800 million people who are undernourished. And surprisingly, this number has increased over a period of time. With economic development, you would expect this number to go down how it has gone up. And there are 2.37 billion people, that's 237 crore people, which is almost one third of the total population of the globe. They are without food or unable to eat a healthy balanced diet on a regular basis. So the target on SDG 2 is by 2030, end hunger and ensure excess by all people, in particular the poor and people in the vulnerable situation and infants to safe, nutritious, and sufficient food all year round. And by 2030 and all form of malnutrition, including by 2025, the internationally agreed targets on stunting and wasting in children under five years of age. SDG 3 talks about good health and well-being. Uh, and here the target is to ensure healthy lives and promote well-being for all at all ages. Uh, currently, there are at least 400 million people who have no basic health care, and 40% of them lack the social protection. And more than 1.6 billion people live in the fragile settings with protracted crisis. And even today, more than 15 million people are still waiting for HIV treatment, even though 21.7 million people are receiving HIV treatment but still 15 million do not receive it. Every two seconds, someone aged 30 to 70 years dies prematurely from the 
non-communicable diseases, for example, the cardiovascular diseases, chronic respiratory diseases, diabetic or cancer. And more than one of every three women have experienced either physical or sexual violence, resulting in both short-term and long-term consequences. And seven million people die every year from exposure to the fine particles in polluted air. The target of SDG 3 is to reduce the global maternal mortality ratio MMR to less than 70 per 1 lakh live births. And by 2030, end preventable deaths of newborn and children under 5 years of age with all countries aiming to reduce the neonatal mortality to at least uh, as low as 12 per 1,000 live births and under 5 mortality to at least as low as 25 per 1,000 live births. SDG 4 focuses on quality education and here the target is to ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. So basically the idea is to help countries in mobilizing resources and implementing innovative and context appropriate solutions. Seek equitable solutions and universal access and facilitate the return of students to school when they reopen to avoid an upsurge in the dropout rates. And it's very important during this COVID era. So the target of 2030 for SDG 4 is to ensure that all girls and boys complete free, equitable and quality primary and secondary education. And all girls and boys have access to quality early childhood development, care and pre-primary education so that they are ready for the primary education. SDG 5 talks about gender equality and the target is to achieve gender equality and empower women and girls. And, and of course, we all understand that, that why it is vital for development. You can't afford to have 50% of your population not contributing or, or not being measured. And then that will happen only when gender equality is ensured. Uh, so the idea is to end all forms of discrimination against all women and girls everywhere and eliminate all form of violence against all women and girls in public and private spheres. And very interestingly, the target is also to recognize and value the unpaid care which women and girls render at homes. Unpaid care and domestic work, that should also be valued. And also ensuring women participation and leadership in decision-making. SDG 6 talks about clean water and sanitation. The objective here is to ensure availability and sustainable management of water and sanitation for all. Every year, we know that millions of people, mainly children, die from the diseases associated with water. And it's estimated that by 2050, at this rate, more than half of the world population will live in water-stressed regions. This is as per this research done by MIT. And every day, over 700 children under age five, die from diarrhea linked to unsafe water sanitation and poor hygiene. Uh, so the water scarcity affects more than 40% of the global population and countries are really finding it very challenging. The target of SDG 6 by 2030 is to achieve universal and equitable access to safe and affordable drinking water for all and to achieve access to adequate and equitable sanitation and hygiene for all and end open defecation, paying special attention to the needs of women and girls and those in vulnerable situations and also improve water quality by reducing the pollution, eliminating, dumping and minimizing the release of hazardous chemicals and materials. SDG 7 is on affordable and clean energy. Uh, the, here the objective is to ensure access to affordable, reliable, sustainable, and modern energy for all. Uh, today, if you really see, and these numbers are shocking, one third of the world's population use dangerous and inefficient cooking system. So 2.6 billion people. And 75, nine, uh, 759 million people do not have access to electricity. Of course, 75% of them live in the sub-Saharan Africa. Energy efficiency is the key, and we need to 
improve the energy efficiency rate. Uh, the annual efficiency improvement rate has been 2% from 2000 to 2018. And but what we need is 3% from 2018 to 2030. And uh, the, the action has to be accelerated on the modern renewable energy, especially in the heating and the transport sector. Today in the electricity sector, uh, this renewable share is 25%, which is good. But in the heating sector, it's only 9%. And transport sector, it's even low at 3.4%. The target of SDG 7 is to ensure universal access to affordable, reliable, and modern, and modern energy services and increase substantially the share of renewable energy in the global energy mix and double the global rate of improvement in the energy efficiency. SDG 8 focuses on decent work and economic growth and have a target of uh, promoting the sustained, inclusive and sustainable economic growth, full and productive employment and decent work for all. Um, so basically the focus is on employment and sustained, inclusive and sustainable economic growth. The target under SDG is to sustain the per capita economic growth in accordance with the national circumstances. So each country will decide, but at least a 7% GDP growth in the least developed countries and achieve higher level of economic productivity through diversification, technological upgrading and innovation, including through a focus on high value added and labor intensive sectors. SDG 9 uh, is on industry innovation and infrastructure. And here the target is to build resilient infrastructure promote inclusive and sustainable industrialization and foster innovation. Uh, and, and of course, the target is twofold uh, to, to basically uh, do the infrastructure development, increasing the efficiency, access to finance, information, technology, and research for industries, and inclusive industrialization by focusing on the developing and least developed countries, island nations, and also the landlocked nations like Bhutan is a Bhutan is a landlocked nation. Uh, SDG 9 is industry, innovation and infrastructure. Uh, the targets in this SDG 9 are developing quality, reliable, sustainable and resilient infrastructure, including regional and transborder infrastructure to support economic development and human well-being with a focus on affordable and equitable access for all and to promote inclusive and sustainable industrialization and by 2030, significantly raising the industry share of employment and GDP in line with national circumstances and doubling the share in the least developed countries. Let's talk about SDG 10 now. It talks about reducing the inequalities, inequalities of income, inequalities of wealth, inequalities in how we treat people, uh, inequalities in, in how we treat people based on race and the ethnicity. Uh, so uh, reducing inequality would mean ensuring equal opportunity and reducing inequalities of outcome, including by eliminating discriminatory laws, policies and practices, and promoting appropriate legislation, policies and actions. The target under SDG 10 are progressively achieve and sustain income growth of bottom 40% of the population. That is those who are in bottom 40% at a rate which is higher than the national rate. So that will help reduce the inequality. That's the gap between the lowest and the highest. And empower and promote the social, economic, and political inclusion of all, irrespective of age, sex, disability, race, ethnicity, origin, religion, or economic or other status. And adopt policies, especially fiscal, wage, and social, protection policies and progressively achieve greater equality. SDG 11 is on sustainable cities and the communities. And the target is to make the cities and human settlement inclusive, safe, resilient, and sustainable. Today, 50% of us live in the cities and is expected to grow by more than 70% by 2050. And this growth will occur in the developing world. 95% of the urban expansion in the next four decades will take place in the developing world and Asia and Africa will contribute 86% to it. Over the next four decades, the urban population in Asia 
is likely to increase from 1.9 billion to 3.3 billion. And even today, 700 people live in slums. Can you imagine that cities occupy only 3% of the land, but account for 60 to 80% of energy consumption, 75% of the GHG emissions, 80% of the global GDP, and consume 70% of all resources, and also generate 70% of global waste. If you can really do an equitable distribution and move from cities to rural areas and develop the rural areas, that can ease the pressure on the cities. So there's a pressure on the fresh water supply, sewage, the living environment and public health in the cities. And the coastal cities are under severe uh, pressure due to climate related disasters such as floods, storms, and the rising sea levels. The target under SDG 11 is to ensure access for all to adequate, safe, and affordable housing and basic services and upgrade slums, and to ensure uh, uh, the sustainable transport system for all improving road safety uh, and the special attention to the needs of vulnerable sections. SDG 12 is on responsible consumption and production. And at least as consumers, all of us can help, uh, you know, uh, maintaining a fine balance. Uh, the target here is to ensure sustainable consumption and production patterns. Can we believe that in just 17 years, the global material footprint has increased by 70%. One million plastic drinking bottles are purchased every minute. This is not every day. This is every minute. 1 million plastic drinking bottles are purchased. 5 trillion single-use plastic bags are thrown away each year. And each person generates 7.3 kg of e-waste. Mobile phones, laptops, desktops, and other things. And only 1.7 kg is recycled out of this 7.3 kgs. Uh, so what is required under SDG 12 is to implement the 10-year framework of programs on sustainable consumption and production uh, uh, and achieve the sustainable management and efficient use of natural resources and substantially reduce waste generation through prevention, reduction, recycling, and reuse. SDG 13 is where, where the maximum focus is there, which is climate action. And it's urgent. We need to take urgent action to combat climate change and its impact. Uh, uh, otherwise, if we don't do it, then the, then the temperature of the earth likely to increase by three degrees Celsius by the end of this century. India contributes 7% of the global GHG emissions. And we have committed to reduce our carbon intensity by 30, 33 to 35%. Uh, we, we need to strengthen the resilience and adaptive capacity to climate-related hazards and natural disaster in all countries and integrate climate change measures into national policies, strategies, and planning. SDG 14 is on life below water. Normally, our focus does not go to the marine life, but we need to conserve and sustainability use the, sustainability, uh, sustainably use the oceans seas and marine resources for sustainable development. There's a loss of USD 50 billion due to impact on the life below oceans. And over 3 billion people, that is more than 40% people, depend on marine and coastal biodiversity for their livelihoods. The global market value of marine and coastal resources and industries is estimated at 3 USD, 3 trillion USD per year, which is close to 5% of the global GDP. And, uh, and still 95% uh, of the ocean still remains unexplored. Unmonitored fishing is something that needs to be checked. And the awareness among all of us on the impact on life below water is still low. 21% of all species of fish are deemed at risk of extinction across the globe. And 40% of the world oceans are heavily affected by the human activities. The target is by 2025, prevent and significantly reduce marine pollution of all kinds. 
in particular from land-based activities, including the marine debris and nutrient pollution. And by 2030, sustainably manage and protect marine and coastal ecosystems to avoid significant adverse impacts, including by strengthening their resilience and take action for the restoration in order to achieve healthy and productive oceans. SDG 15 talks about life on land where we all of us live. And the target is to protect, restore, and promote sustainable use of terrestrial ecosystem, sustainably manage forests, combat the desertification, and halt and reverse land degradation, and halt the biodiversity loss. Today, the loss of species is 100 to 1,000 times faster than their natural extinction rates. And whereas the 70% of the world's poor live in rural areas and depend directly on the biological diversity for their livelihoods. Today, we are pursuing economic growth at the expense of the natural environment and uh, general awareness level is low. 7.3 million hectares of land, which is equal to one country like Panama, is lost every year. And 15% of the GHG emission come from the deforestation. Look at the kind of deforestation which is happening across the globe. So the target of 2030 is to combat desertification, restore degraded land and soil, including land affected by desertification, drought and floods, and strive to achieve a land degradation neutral world. We must ensure the conservation of mountain ecosystems, the way the glaciers are melting, the way the temperature in the Antarctica is rising, that's becoming a tourism hub. Uh, maybe two, three decades ago, nobody could have thought of going to Antarctica. Uh, we need to promote fair and equitable sharing of the benefits arising from the utilization of genetic resources and promote appropriate access to such resources. SDG 6 talks about the peace, justice, and strong institutions. The target is to promote peaceful and inclusive societies for sustainable development, provide access to justice for all, and build effective, accountable, and inclusive institutions at all levels. Uh, the target is to significantly reduce all forms of violence and related death rates elsewhere, everywhere, and abuse, exploitation, trafficking, and all form of violence against and torture of children and promote the rule of law and significantly reduce the illicit financial and arms flow, strengthen the recovery and return of stolen assets and combat all forms of organized crime. SDG 17 is on partnerships for the goals. We have to strengthen the means of implementation and revitalize the global partnership for sustainable uh, development. So this will stitch together all the 16 goals. Uh, and basically, now let us talk about, uh, we have talked about what these SDGs are. Now let's talk about what is sustainability reporting. Sustainability reporting is the practice of measuring, disclosing, and being accountable to internal and external stakeholders for organizational performance against specific environmental, social, and governance goals in matrices that supports sustainable development and for how it's incorporated into a company's overall strategies and policies. So it talks about the financial value, consumer value, human value, and societal values and why it is required. Uh, it's required because an organization need to consider the impact of their action across the ecosystem. For example, if a if a soft drink manufacturing company is using water, so they, if and if water is priced at say hundred rupees per thousand liter, so they can't say uh, since we have paid for the water, so our our, our work is over. No, can they really replenish hundred liters of water in the nature at one thousand rupees? We need to think about the opportunity cost of the resources that we are using. We need to uh, we need to ensure that uh, the performance of an organization 
takes into account environment, sustainability, health and safety, and human resources. So when we talk about ESG, we talk about sustainability. The three components of ESG, E, e comprises climate change, ecological impacts, energy management, GHG emissions, litigation risk, for example, related to environmental contamination, policies and regulations, raw material sourcing from the sustainable vendors, renewable energy, sustainable products and packaging, water and waste management. S stands for community relations, diverse, so, I mean, the social comprises of community relations, diversity, equity and inclusion, employee health and safety, human capital development, labor management, privacy and data security, product quality and safety, supply chain standards. A G stands for anti-bribery and anti-corruption, business ethics, corporate resiliency, diversity of leadership, executive compensation, lobbying and political contributions, ownership structure, and tax transparency. There are, uh, before 2010, only GRI framework was there, but between 2010 to 2020, we have GRI, BRR, CDP, IIRC, and TCFD. And now, of course, many more frameworks are emerging. World Economic Forum has given a stakeholder capitalism matrices. It focuses on governance, planet, people, and prosperity. So it focuses basically on these four areas. Under governance, they talk about the purpose purpose, the composition of the governing body, material issues impacting the stakeholders, anti-corruption, protected ethics advice and reporting mechanism, integrating risk and opportunity into business processes. Under planet, GHG, TCFD implementation, land use and ecological sensitivity, and water consumption and withdrawal in water stressed areas. When we, they talk about people, they talk about percentage, diversity and inclusion, percentage in pay equality, percentage wage level increase, risk of for incidents of child force or compulsory labor, percentage people having access to health and safety and training pro provided. Prosperity, when it is talked about, they talk about absolute number and rate of employment, economic contribution, financial investment contribution, total R&D expenditure, and the total taxes paid. Now, what's coming globally? Globally, we are coming with Climate Standard Board, TCFT. We have the International Sustainability Standard Board, which also has issued the exposure draft to, to its general principal standard this, this morning. Uh, in the Indian scenario, uh, we had the national, uh, we have the vol voluntary guidance on the CSR, which was issued by MC in 2009. And then came the NVG, National Voluntary Guidelines, in 2011. In 2013, the non-financial information uh, disclosure became mandatory. Uh, in, uh, and then uh, the MCA constitute did a committee on BRR, business responsibility reporting. And uh, in 2019, SEBI extended the BRR requirement to top 1,000 listed companies by market cap. And now from next year, new uh, the BRR is being replaced by BRSR. And from next year, it will be mandatory for top 1,000 listed companies. ICI has uh, constituted a sustainability reporting standard board, of which I am the chairman. And uh, uh, the objective has been to develop the sustainability reporting framework in India, leading the adoption of sustainability reporting by corporates, collaborating with regulators and government agencies, nurturing skills of char chartered accountants in sustainability reporting and assurance, and recognizing excellence in sustainability reporting. We are focusing on te technical literature, capacity building, advocacy, and the regulatory interaction. On the technical literature, uh, we have uh, issued a standard on the assurance engagements uh, on the greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, and uh, the back background material on the BRSR, Business Responsibility and Sustainability Reporting. Uh, 
we also have a publication on SDG accountants creating sustainable world in three volumes and a benchmarking model on sustainability reporting maturity model, uh, which is built around the BRSA and the first of its kind across the globe. So the sustainability reporting maturity model uh, basically uh, uh, basically puts the uh, puts the um, whole uh, whole uh, evaluation of BRSR into four categories. Uh, level one is a formative stage. Level two is an emerging stage. Level three is an established stage, uh, and level four is lead, leading by example. Uh, for capacity building, we have done nine batches of our five day certificate course, wherein more than seven hundred members have been trained. And we have organized 12 national and global webinars in which more than 17,000 uh, members have participated and also developed uh, a film on, uh, on, the, uh, on the board and its activities and also organized a carbon footprint challenge. Uh, on the advocacy side, we are working with almost all the regulators across the globe, whether it's IFAC, IIRC, GRI, PAFA, ISSB, UNCAC, SAFA, World Economic Forum, SEBI, Niti Aayog, etc. And now we are working with the Security Exchange Board of India on developing the framework for the social stock exchange. We also instituted sustainability reporting awards last year. And uh, the Buddhis are both national as well as international awards to encourage companies and organizations to adopt sustainable reporting practices. Uh, we are focusing on research. We have instituted four research grants on the sustainability related areas like, uh, like the green finance, circular economy. Uh, and then we are focusing on organizing workshops on board's role in the ESG. We are also coming out with an ESG talk, talk show, uh, helping the government in developing social audit standards for the social stock exchange. And uh, we are also working on the ESG ratings and on the ESG data repository. Uh, so this is all uh, about uh, my presentation and uh, where, where we are today and, and what we are doing in this space from the Institute of Chartered Accountant of India. I'll be happy to take a, a few questions if there are any. Thank yes. you. Oh. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you so much, uh, sir for this uh, very informative uh, session. And uh, yes, first quickly, we'll take up the questions. Uh, so I'll just request the participants, uh, if they have any questions, uh, yeah, they can please put it in the comment section so that I can put it across to the speaker. Okay, so, um, so, uh, so am I audible? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So uh, there's one question uh, put by Dr. Yadav, and uh, the question is, uh, how do you think with current economic policies, uh, we will be able to achieve the goals of sustainable development. I think it's on a global uh, scale is asking because I can't see the reference to global or national economic policies. Uh, because uh, sustainable development, of course, goals, they're very extensive. Uh, and uh, because they're trying to address not just human health and ecological health, but it has a very wide spectrum. So what according to you, uh, sir, uh, based on the current economic policies, um, we will be able to achieve the goals. Uh, of uh, I think the economic policies have to undergo a change. There has to be a focus on green. Uh, so green finance will be around the corner. There have to be stricter laws to deal with the uh, with the CO2 emissions, with the damage to the environment. So these policies have to be changed and incentive have to be there for the sustainable practices. Right. So how long do you think, uh, if I take India as a, as a subject here, how, do you, how long do you think India needs uh, to change uh, its, so its whole... In, India is changing fast, uh, the policy on the electric vehicles, uh, then the announcement regarding the sovereign green, uh, sovereign green bonds, social stock exchange, where we are, we are changing very fast, maybe 
maybe it may take another three to seven years uh, for more and more policies to come in this direction. Right, sure. Um, so uh, there's another question uh, that do you think there's a requirement of uh, a political will to implement and achieve these sustainable development goals? 100%. Without a political will, it cannot happen. And there is strong political will in India. It's being driven from the top. Uh, Dr. Tanu asked that you mentioned Bhutan in your session. Uh, do you think and you, do you believe that India can have a policy, something like them, to be successful in ecological conservation and, uh, you know, hence sustain the health and happiness of its, uh, of its people? So Bhutan is a very different country. 68% uh, land by constitution mm. is meant for to be green uh, land. And it's a, it's, 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 it's a landlocked country. So Bhutan has a very limited population. They do not uh, really like uh, tourism. To put it. Uh, so there are heavy costs uh, for the tourists. Uh, uh, so uh, looking at the size of our population, I don't think that we can have laws like Bhutan. But yes, uh, wherever possible, maybe. Right. Yeah. Uh, so, okay. Uh... Uh, currently, uh, there's a question by Dr. Sharma. Uh, currently, we are all aware of the economic crisis in Sri Lanka. Uh, so uh, how difficult uh, do you think it will be for a country like Sri Lanka to continue to protect you know, the environment and its economic um, viability and its people, especially with climate change and challenges and, and the economic imbalance that it is going through? I will not be able to comment on uh, what... Sri Lanka will be doing. Okay, but maybe uh, if so, if like it happens to India or taking the example of Sri Lanka, how do you think uh, one country should take uh, necessary actions? So, uh, I think uh, it's a case uh, which is very, very different than India. However, uh, if that kind of a situation has to happen, one has to look at what are the resources in hand, uh, whether uh, own resources or the resources which can be taken from others. And uh, there has to be a strong political will to resolve those kind of issues. Uh, I'll compare Sri Lanka with the, maybe say, take a company in India, which is dead. dead end. Now we take the example of Cafe Coffee Day. The day the owner committed a suicide, uh, it was, uh, there was a huge amount of debt. But the way the successors have carried on, they have substantially paid off the debt. Company is same. Rather, the promoter has gone. A promoter's wife is running the show. 75% debt has been repaid. Not even a single franchisee, I believe, has been closed. So it's all about management and the governance. Uh, so, and uh, there are many, uh, many or institution in India who are, who take these stressed assets and turn them around. And in some cases, you know, they they just fall flat, and there is no turning around. So it's all about management and governance of that organization, uh, and it can be extended to a country as well. Right. Look at your own example of Ramanujan College. Uh, the way Dr. S.P. Agarwal has turned it around, I think it spoke volumes about his capabilities. Absolutely. So I think that was a perfect example at the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, so one last question. I think if you can take this up and then we can just wind up the session. So the, Dr. Priyanka asked that, what is your take on, uh, like a similar question, but... Uh, uh, what is your take on efforts, uh, especially with policies and programs taken up by the governments around the world to combat climate change? Do you think, is it enough, like no. whatever they're doing? It's not enough. 
and particularly the way america turned down i mean uh, in the paris agreement they backed out i think india is doing commendable efforts whereas the d- developed countries are not doing so it's not enough not at all i think almost all the questions have been uh, explained and taken up very beautifully by uh, by sir so yeah. so i think it's time to draw the curtains now sir and uh, i wholeheartedly uh, thank you for uh, giving us your time and uh, putting up such an interesting session an informative session for all this participants here thank you thank, thank you, you very so much sir. it was a pleasure to be with all of you thank you thank you very much thank you so much sir and thank you all the participants for joining us on the live session uh, all the related uh, information will be there on the portal and on the telegram group thank you so much have a good day everyone